George and Sheldon back 500 quid. It may look as if it's been stuck together with elastic bands and chewing gum, but there's more than meets the eye here. With some sought-after body parts, there could be a couple of pearls lurking in this oyster somewhere. Key moneymakers on the Herald are the distinctive clamshell bonnet and bundles of unique stylistic features that include wing mirrors, trims and interior fitting. Day one of the dismantle and job one for George and Sheldon is to get that potentially valuable bonnet off. But with a car of this age, nothing is simple. So we started taking off the um, first bolts and um, everything went fine, you know, they were coming off nicely. Have you got yours all out? I've done the rod, I just need them spanners. See if you can just crack it with that. It looks a bit rusty. We've got to the second bolt and then it all just started going wrong. Oh, wait a minute, that's tight. Shell, it snapped. That ain't gonna come out now. I'm gonna have to cut that. Unfortunately, George snapped a bolt in one of the sleeves that um, holds the hinges on. And um, I said to him, well, get an angle grinder, just cut it off. It's the front end of the car. I'm not going to tell you it's there and take bits and pieces off of it. Well, of course you're going to have to respray it. Look, come and have a look at it, see the condition of it. I've been as honest and as open with you as I possibly can. There we go. She's off. You want it? Cool. Sheldon's openness could be about to pay off. Here's Herald obsessive Matthew Hughes. I've come down to buy a Herald bonnet. Uh, because I'm restoring two Triumph Heralds at the moment and I'm looking to spend about £100. You got the pictures that I emailed you, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it all looks the same. It's all there. Yeah. She's really tidy, she's solid. There's no rot, there's no rust, there's no filler. I was hoping for 300 quid. I was uh, hoping to pay £300. Well, what, were you, what sort of figure did you have in mind? £100? No, no, no. Look, I've left all the chrome on it, I've left the headlights. That lettering's worth a lot of money. I had a fella down the other day who just wanted the H. But if you're taking it now, I'll let you have it for 220 140 You come down a I'll, bit lower? I'll, I'll, I'll let you take it away now for 160 Right, 160 then. Yeah? Yeah. All right, lovely. Cheers, mate. I suppose you want to end with it, put it in there, didn't you, as well? Yeah, that'd be nice. All right. All right oh. Lovely. Well, let's get the money side out of it first. Yeah. There we go. Is that 160? Yeah. Lovely. All right. George! 160 for the bonnet sees George and Sheldon kick off the money making. Across the yard, Frankie's getting organised. Have you developed a system here, Frankie? No, I have got a great system. And the have other you? thing is, Ben, look, the thing is, I mean, I'm looking at, I'm looking at prices here, Ben. Yeah. And I mean, those wheels, for example, on the front, on, the, on, that, on that side. Lotus Cortina times two. You took the words out of my mouth. Nice wheels. It's all about money. I mean, I'm not going to quote numbers, but it's looking like a gorilla all day long. People say to me, what's a gorilla? Well, it's two monkeys. That's a thousand pounds. We could be talking endless amounts of money for a motor like that. Monkey talk aside, he's onto something here because, despite what's missing, there's still plenty of cash in the Anglia. Fans of Americana will lap up body parts such as chrome trim and rear wings, whilst a working array of mechanical parts should sweeten the deal. As they start inspecting the interior of the Anglia, it becomes apparent there could be a few extras to take to market. How many Ford Anglias have we got in there? I don't know, but there's a lot of gear in it. It's a hell of a lot of gear in here. Look at that tank. That's got to be worth a few quid straight away. Five, about a five in our Frank. You see, you see that hole? You see that hole in the petrol tank? Give it Ben the punters. The punters don't know it's got an hole in it, do they? What you keep forgetting, Frankie, is these punters are they have got eyes. So you think they notice? I yeah. Across the yard, George and Sheldon are determined to hear that Herald engine running, as it could be a big seller. You take that. Bend that round. No. Oh, oh. Go on. That's it. Right. If you hold that up there. And then crank her over. Go on then. Look. 
and there's no spark. So we turned it over, we couldn't get a spark, so you, you're gonna have to check things like your plugs, the leads, the coil. Basically, for those who don't know what a coil does, it's a converter. It converts 12 volts into a much higher voltage for your spark plug, for your engine. All the time that that reading's not stable, I know it's not working. Right, ignition on. On. All right, lovely, off. Off. Yes, I think the coil's at it. With replacement coils easy to come by, the boys could be back on track. Right, ignition on. On. All right, off. Off. Ignition on. On. Right, lovely. Yeah, that's reading the current now. Turn it off. See if we've got a spark. Right, go on then, uh, flick her over. Hey, oh, 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 hey. Turn it off, turn it off. The spark's lovely, but Sucks. she's running on three cylinders. Lovely. That was, that was sweet, wasn't it? Right, go on then, fire her up. A triumphant roar from the engine and a blast of smoke from the high-tech exhaust assembly signals success. And good news doesn't end there. With an internet sale for the engine, putting a hefty £240 in the bank. And the money keeps rolling in for George and Sheldon. Thanks to Pete Costa, who's after wing mirrors and steering wheel. Come all the way from Birmingham down to Heathrow to see if I can get some wing mirrors for my Triumph Herald Estate. I was hoping I can get them for 30 quid, but now I've seen a steering wheel as well, what I like, so I'm going to try and get both in for 40 quid. I've got the wing mirrors that you wanted. Yeah. And I've got the wheel. I was hoping to get 50 quid for it, Pete. I was hoping to pay £10 a mirror and 20 for the... Uh... Sorry? £10 a mirror? I was hoping, yeah. Oh, I've, come, I've travelled, I've travelled. I know you've travelled and I'm going to show you some love, but come on, man. Work with me. Work with... I've got 40 quid. You've got cold hands. Quick, I'll give you my 40 quid the quicker you can put your hands back you know, in your pocket. Do you know what? <laughs> 40 quid, yeah, I'm happy with that. Happy 40 with that? quid, yeah, yeah. Sure. All right, let's. Deal. 40 quid's good. There you go, mate. I'll swap you. Would you like some cash? Yes, please. That would be nice. I'll just put these in the car. Go for I it. won't go anywhere else, where? Lovely. You're a gentleman, Pete. Thank you very much. Well, listen, have a safe drive back. Yeah, I'll try um, my best. Yeah, she's lovely, man. Well, I do went down nicely. Managed to get what I needed. Uh, never know, I might be back down soon to get some more parts. And that 40 notes puts George and Sheldon just £60 from breaking even. Across the yard, Frankie is busy trying to flog the Anglia panels. You want those two panels up the Ford Anglia? That shouldn't be a problem, brother. I'm sure we can sort something out. With money in the panels, a less than 1,000cc engine is little more than an obstruction. We're doing it as we speak. I've got my team working on it now. Easy talk for Frankie, not so easy for Ben. Back in the day when that car was new, the technique was to weld everything together. Modern cars are usually bolted, so when you crash them, you have a little dig, bolt the wing off, bolt one back on. But this is fully welded, so it's very difficult. Now, Frankie had a nice little easy sail. Easy sail for Frankie, difficult in reality to actually take off. This job is as difficult as climbing Mount Everest with a Ford Anglia in your backpack. They're very efficient. So am I, by the way. And I run the outfit. And when the buyer, Dave Empson, arrives, Frankie sees a chance to flog him more than just the panels for his lime green Anglia. I've had it about six weeks, two months. Purchased it from his son, he's 17, for his first car. The car's been lowered, it's had a fair bit of work done to it. It's got jag leather seats in it that are electric, and I think my boy would rather see bucket seats, but that's another story. Dave, on a serious note, as you can see, I've displayed all my goods out on the pavement. I've opened my art to you, right? And as an added bonus, that inside panel is going to go with the outside panel. See these, Dave? See them? They are additional added bonuses. Can you hear me, Ben? Yes, Frankie, loud and clear. Can you bring out the other display parts to put out on display? What does he want? A little bit of chrome? Yes, he does. Wow. Dave, Dave this is a bit of a bobby dazzler, mate. This, look at that. Lovely, yeah, that is nice lovely. chrome, that. Yeah. See what I mean, Dave? That's good stuff. Nice, yeah. And that's good stuff. And that boy, that boy has not stopped. Has not stopped. It's not free, David. He's not free. He's knocked his palms out all morning, David. David, I'm not going to argue with you, Dave. And I'm going to be straight. 
You can take this little lot, there's a little parcel, including those chrome bits there. Including all that. Yes. David, I'm going to let you take that little lot away. 300 nickel to you, brother. You got 300, you got a carpet on, you got 300 nickel on you. Yeah, I've got 310 on me. 310, David, you got yourself a deal, brother. Let's have it out of the pocket, bruv. Yeah, I come down to purchase the wings. Um, Frankie's a lad, twisted me arm. I've come away with more than what I expected. £310 is a major boost for the boys, but they've got some catching up to do. Although Frankie has mastered the art of persuading the buyer to offer more than the asking price, watch out, Darren Brown. It's day two out of three, and the teams are working hard to turn end-of-life 60s classics into pound notes. They're very efficient. So am I, by the way. And I run the outfit. George and Sheldon paid a neat £500 for a rather lacklustre Triumph Herald. On day one, they sold a bonnet for £160. Engine and bits for £240, as well as mirrors and steering wheel for a further 40 quid. Ben and Frankie forked out £600 and wound up with a deluxe Ford Anglia. Day one saw the boys up the ante on a panel deal, netting a cool 310 notes. But they've got some catching up to do. And an opportunity to do that catching up arises with a potential buyer for the diff. The slight problem is that it's still on the Anglia. Could I have you balancing this on that and I'll knock all the pins out and then we'll lower it down? Am I going to get crushed? It's a, it's a possibility that I'm willing to risk. A bit of this. That's a way. So will this break my arms? We'll find out. It's a bit of an experiment. Try and keep it steady, love, because we don't want it falling off the trolley jack, do we, love? OK, love. It's really nice and light, though, Ben, isn't it? Yes, loves. And it's just as well because Frankie needs to get that diff on the road and out to the punter. I'm on my way to see a geezer called Tim. That's a bit of racing, all that game. But anyway, what's the diff off of the uh, Ford Anglia? I might see if I can get him to throw in a little, uh, a little trip round the track, you know. Waiting to cut the deal with Frankie is racing enthusiast Tim Foxlow. The former I racing is a former called Classic Hot Rods, so it's taking hot rod racing back to the late 70s. And we're running cars that are a replica of the cars that we were running back then. The Ford Anglers, Escort Mark 1s, Escort Mark 2s and Chevettes. So it's quarter mile oval racing in one of the fastest formulas on the tracks. I'm running a Mark 2 Ford Escort. Uh, with a fourth race Anderson engine in it. Obviously these cars are fitted with racing gearboxes, but the variation on gearing to make them accelerate quicker is based on the differential. And the 4-4 diff, which I understand Frankie's got, is one that we're really looking for. They are fetching good money, but probably £100 max is, uh, is where I'd like to be with that. Tim! What a cow. Hello, son. How are you? I'm all right, Frankie. Tim, look, listen. Where's this diff? First things first, I want to get in this. Now, give me my crash helmet, will you? Do you think you'll be able to handle this, Frankie? You name it, I can do it, son. Don't worry about that. Uh, I, I thought I was taking him round at first in the passenger seat, but he's quite cocky about this and uh, has insisted on driving himself round. So, um, but let's see how he goes, eh? No, you're punter. It's rule number one in the selling game. And Frankie takes his homework seriously. This should be a walk in the park. Frankie's seen Days of Thunder 12 times. The noise of it, it's unbelievable! He may drive a hard bargain, but that's where Frankie's driving ability ends. Oh! Oh! He's sliding, he's sliding, what's that all about? Hold on! Hold on! Tim! Tim! I can't get a grip! I can't get a grip! Tim, I can't get a grip! All right, Tim. All right, Frankie. Here's your diff. Oh, Frankie, put it down. You've not even cleaned it off. No, no. Oh. That's two and a half hundred quid, Tim. To you. 
Frankie, you were not even going to get anywhere with that because I can buy a new one at 240. But why would you have no winning left second hand? Because they wear out on the crown wheel and pinion. I, I mean, I'd only be starting at something like 80 on that one, Frankie. I